Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for August 2018. Let's take a look at uh, what we've been up to over the past month. So we might as well start right here. Obviously you can see we finished the uh, backdrop. So um, same as you guys saw last month on this side, I did the exact same thing over here. Went and got a couple more cans of that blue paint mixed up and then uh, put that on with a roller. Well, I cut it in with a brush up top, you can see there. So first thing I did was cut it in with an angled brush. Then I painted the whole thing with a roller. And the final thing was I took my um, Critter Spray Gun, which is from Lee Valley, and I mixed white paint, uh, basically 50-50 with water. And then I sprayed uh, just the bottom, kind of maybe the bottom one third of the backdrop uh, with white, kind of starting uh, darker at the bottom and then working up and uh, try to give that illusion of a, of a sky. So that was a big job, I'm glad we got that finished. Uh, so I was able to move on with laying tracks. So that's what we've been doing uh, mostly for the past month. So just looking back the other way, I think last month I'd finished the backdrop, backdrop up to here and that's kind of where the track had ended. So the first thing we did was once we got the backdrop painted, we went ahead and put the crossovers in here at Divide. So there's a set of number eight uh, Pico crossovers here. Got those installed as well as the start of the concrete track work on the north track. So this is sort of the view if you were standing on the uh, Trans Canada overpass here looking at the crossovers or what used to be a set of crossovers. Um, on the real thing now there's just a set of signals here they actually took the switches out but the three head and two head signals are all still here in place. So I'm taking a little bit of artistic license uh, with keeping the crossovers on my layout which will add uh, a little bit of operational kind of interest to it if rather than just having it pure straight track through here. So those are uh, installed and all ready to go. I haven't wired them yet. So basically I've got, uh, I can only run trains up to the crossovers right now, but hopefully we'll be uh, wiring these up soon. We'll be able to use the rest of the track work. So going past uh, the divide crossover, we've got the tracks all, double tracks all laid. Both bridges past uh, Bath Creek there and all the way down Lake Louise and past the other side. We'll take a look over there. So that's just looking down past Divide. So track work's all done. Still have to drop feeders and uh, put the scenic ties in, but you can see here the two bridges at Bath Creek and going past to Lake Louise here. It's nice, it's morning down here right now. We actually get a little bit of sunlight, it's kind of nice. And mainline track is done um, on the north track all the way down here and I'm coming around here now at Rance Curve. Lake Louise, I actually forgot one Code 83 switch that I need so I had to, uh, the south track's not done all the way through. So you can see here where I ended up, uh, procurement department uh, forgot to order the switch here for uh, Code 83 mainline. I have the 70 for the siding here at Lake Louise, but uh, forgot the main line switch, so I'm gonna have to get another one before I can lay that track. I found uh, for laying straight sections, it's best to do the entire straight section all at once. So it's kind of a big job, but uh, kind of get better results rather than doing a few pieces of the straight section I was finding. I just found that I've had better success uh, doing the whole entire straight section at once. So like this piece here from uh, Lake Louise all the way down to the switch, I laid that all at the same time, and that way you're able to get it quite straight you can see what the whole thing's going to look like. So that's why I haven't laid this uh, south track piece yet because I'm going to do this all at once. And this is just looking the other way. Railway westbound past Lake Louise. So at the turnout here, it's the Pico number eight here. This is where the, uh, obviously where the single track ends at Lake Louise. We've got the north track, which is the new line going up to the right at a 1% grade. And the old line uh, will go straight through past the station before beginning its ascent. What is the Lake Louise scene's gonna look like, kind of from above? And then looking past the switch at Lake Louise, we've got the Pipestone River Bridge, tracks all laid there, Lake Louise Drive overpass. And after Lake Louise Drive, we've got a 34 uh, inch radius curve here at the end of the aisle. And it comes back this way past the first Bow River scene here. That's all done. You can see we've got the test train down there. My son, uh, his job is picking up ties. Um, that 
are left behind. So he gathers these up and then he also tests the track, which is a very important job as you can imagine. So this is where I'm at as of today. I'm uh, just getting to Murat's curve here. I got the same method as I've been using all along. I used the uh, just steel nuts to hold the uh, track down. Let it dry for about five hours and then I move on to the next section. So since the last update, I finished off this uh, the riverbed here, the Bow River at uh, Morant's Curve. This was a pretty big job actually. This is quite a bit of uh, plywood. So it goes all the way, it's this really kind of crazy looking shape that goes all the way past. Um, just like the prototype, the river actually hits the roadbed fill and then kind of cascades off it and then flows past Morant's Curve. So I tried to capture that. So my uh, river does the same thing. And uh, I did this plywood piece just using scrap uh, 5 8 that I had left over. And uh, it kind of goes all the way around and then it's going to disappear here into trees and into where this uh, scenery divider is. So kind of a lot of artistic license on this side, but it does sort of follow the curves in the direction of the real Marantz curve. Just takes way sharper of a current corner, obviously. And it'll obviously look a lot different because this, uh, this whole little island here will be covered with trees and uh, you know we'll have a lot of trees here kind of helping to separate to divide the two scenes because we sort of jump ahead about 50 miles here when we go past this uh, scenery divider because the other side is Banff. Here's a shot of the scenery divider. I don't know if I've ever showed this before but uh, this is basically how I'm going to kind of make the river disappear and I'll put trees real high on both sides and try to you know keep the keep the trees high along here too as well kind of help divide uh, with this Banff on this side and Moran's Curve on the other. So looking down at Banff, it's just a complete mess right now. Nothing really to show you there. Um, getting ready to... I've got the track ready to go, but like I was saying before, I like to do these sections all at once, and since I was working over here, I just kept going. So once I uh, come around, I'll probably do this whole... this entire curve here, all the way around, as one kind of track laying, and then once I get to the switch here, at Banff, I'll do from the switch all the way to the first reverse loop track. And I'll do them one at a time. But yeah, I'll do this probably the north track first and then I'll build off that with the other tracks. So down here at the east end of Banff, um, just getting ready, kind of getting the track work ready to connect once I get that uh, main line laid like I was talking about. So these are code 70 uh, microengineering number sixes are going to go into the yard here. So there'll be three different sizes of rail actually in Banff. So the main line here will be code 83, just like the real thing, it's uh, 136 pound. And then the passing siding is going to be code 70. So it's just a little bit smaller, barely can notice it. Um, the switches are all code 70 because that's the smallest microengineering makes. And then the three yard tracks, so there's passing siding, or uh, main line, passing siding, and then the three yard tracks, those are gonna be code 55, kind of maybe make it look like a uh, stick rail like it is on the real thing so I've got all that uh, ready to go just kind of waiting to finish as I come around the corner there so then going uh, past bound into staging just like on the other reverse loop I've got a set of uh, re-railers well actually it's one re-railer that I cut in half kind of make them smaller I'm gonna make this uh, like a little maybe a private road crossing or something just to try and uh, disguise them a little bit because this uh, really just kind of starts onto the layout here <clears throat> directly out of coming out of staging so that's where I'm at with the uh, track lane so that catches us up to today with uh, layout progress guys so what's uh, coming up will be um, a massive amount of feeders so you can see I've been getting ready here cutting feeders I'm gonna have to drop feeders on all the mainline track none of that is done yet as well as uh, starting to run the, I still have to run the buses under staging, so that's coming as well. And once I get all the feeders installed and uh, soldered up and everything, I'll be able to start putting in the hardware. So I've got uh, everything I need here, basically for the power of the layout and for the block detection and signaling. So I got a couple, I have another one somewhere else, but I have two of these SC8Cs. Um, Digitrax uh, BDL-168, which will be for the block detection. Uh, most, a ton of these uh, terminal strip mounting kits for signaling. And uh, that'll be in the lock, 
a long time off in the future because I don't even have the signals built yet. I'm going to have to build those myself probably. And then uh, a lot of these uh, Tambelli Depot juicers, which I'm going to use for the reverse loops, as well as uh, circuit breakers. So um, the dual frog juicer can do one reverse loop on its own, or it can be a circuit breaker, and they have a hex one somewhere here. Right here. The hex frog juicer can do uh, three reverse loops, so I've got enough to do all basically 10 staging tracks which are reverse loops as well as a couple extra for uh, circuit breaker protection for the layout for each booster. So that's what we're going to be working on uh, over the next coming month and that'll wrap up this layout update. I hope you guys had a uh, had a really good summer. As always, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.